All right, today we're going to talk about bunting. Uh, unfortunately, bunting is either overlooked a lot of times um, in camps and things, or there just simply isn't enough time to touch on it by coaches. Um, it's becoming a lost art form, but it continues to be a very, very important part of the game um, and can really help you and help you score some runs, advance some base runners during the course of the season. So today we're going to focus on sacrifice bunting. Now the first thing to talk about is, as a bunter, you want to get the bat head out in front of home plate. So in order to do that, we have to, we, as a hitter, we'd like to try and cheat a little bit and step up in the box a little bit. Um, because that will ensure that when we square up, our bat is going to be in fair territory. If we're a back of the box person and we don't square up properly and get that bat head out in front of home plate, there's a lot better chance for us to bunt that ball, ball foul. So the first thing, first tip is to creep up in the box just a little bit, not too much, so, because if you have a really smart catcher, they're gonna know something's up. So when we're in the box, the okay, first thing that we're gonna talk about is we wanna square up nice and early and do it with good fundamentals. What we do not wanna do is we don't wanna turn and square our whole body up to the pitcher. If I square up here and that pitch is thrown at me, I'm set up here, I have no place to go. I'm gonna get hit and I've seen it actually happen where a batter will take one right in the chest. That doesn't feel too good. So we never wanna take that back leg and square it up to the pitcher. Instead, when we're in the box here and the pitcher is getting ready to, to throw the ball, when they lift their leg, okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pivot on our, our feet and we're going to turn so that our toes are pointing towards the pitcher. This way now, if there's a pitch thrown at us, we can pivot away and take one on the back side. In the back, it's going to hurt a lot less than getting one right in the chest. So the first key is that pivot on our feet. We want to get our feet turned, our knees turned, so that we're facing the pitcher. As we're turning on our toes, we want to take our top hand and slide it up the back to where the bat gets bigger. We want to get up on the barrel. And we want to make sure that we're hiding our fingers from the ball. Okay, we see a lot of kids, even a lot of major leaguers, grab that bat like this and bump the ball. If we get a bad pitch, if we're not uh, quick enough with our hands, we take one off our hands, we're going to be done for a while. Okay, as baseball players, softball players, we need our hands to throw, we need our hands to hit. So we need to protect our hands. If our hands get hit, we're going to be sitting on the bench for quite a while. So as that pitcher is getting in the windup, lifting their leg to get ready to throw, okay, we're going to turn, and as, as we turn, that top hand is going to slide up the bat. Now notice I'm out in front of home plate. Okay, if I set my bat down here, I'm a good foot out in front of home plate. Again, that's going to enable me to keep the ball fair. Okay. Now the next thing that we're going to talk about is our bat angle. Okay, we don't want to bunt with a flat bat. Okay, we want to have always want to have our top hand higher than our bottom hand. Okay, and we want to get that bat out in front. What I run into with a lot of kids is that they're going to they're going to put the bat right here. They're going to have their their elbows bent quite a bit, and they're going to have the bat close to their body. Okay, we want to reach that bat out so that our arms are almost fully extended, but not quite. Again, we're hiding those fingers. And we want to get our head down so that we can really track the ball right to the bat. Now, we're also, we want to set that bat head at the top of the strike zone. So I'm going to set it right at the um, my Camp 333 logo here. Now, any pitch that comes in higher than my bat right now, I know is going to be a ball. So I'm gonna, I can pull back. So it's very easy for me to see where that pitch is if it's a ball or strike. If it's a ball, I'm gonna pull back and take that pitch. We don't wanna bump pitches out of the strike zone and help that pitcher, okay? If that pitch is low, but still in the strike zone at my knees, okay, I need to bend my knees to go get that ball. The last thing I wanna do as a bunter is drop that bat head to bunt the ball, okay? 
We need to use our legs to get that low strike and still keep that bat angle so that the, the barrel of the bat is lower than the knob. When we do this, we have a greater chance of popping the ball up and bunting it foul. Okay? So to review, creep up in the box a little bit to make sure that you're getting that bat head out in fair territory. It's going to help you bunt that ball fair more easily. As that pitcher lifts their leg and gets ready to throw the ball, okay, we're going to rotate on our toes and at the same time we're going to move our hands up the barrel of the bat and hide our hand. We're going to make sure that our top hand is above our bottom head, head, hand. Our barrel is going to be higher than the knob of the bat. Again, I'm out in front of home plate. I set that barrel of the bat at the top of my strike zone. Anything that's above that point, I'm going to pull back and take as a ball. If it's a strike that's lower in the zone than where my bat is, I need to use my legs to adjust to get that ball and bunt it. Never want to drop the bat barrel. So, there's a little bit more that goes into bunting and being an effective bunter, but those are the basics. Again, with everything else, bunting takes a lot of practice, takes a feel, um, but it's something that everybody can get good at with a little bit of practice.